would I drop anything ugly? No, you know, that's Hey guys, it's me Sylvia back with another video. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm gonna be answering you guys' questions that I asked you to hit me up with on Instagram stories. Hey guys, it is I. Today I'm filming a Q&A answering all of you guys' questions. So you know those burning questions that you have to ask me, just ask them down below so I can answer them for you guys and I'm gonna spill the tea. You know, there's nothing off limits. Ask me. The focus will obviously be less on the makeup and more so on just answering questions for you guys, but I will have all of the products linked in the description if you are curious to how we get the final look. Don't know what I'm even gonna do today. We're just gonna wing it. But before we get started, you know you gotta subscribe to my channel by clicking that little red button. You know the rumor is if you do that, you're gonna find your soulmate like tomorrow and be happy for the rest of your life. Subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into talking about my life. Primer first, you know I'm going in with the Chanel cause I'm feeling bougie. Honestly, I just realized I haven't used this in a long time. I'm like, I spent way too much money on that to let it sit in my makeup collection. Anyways, so we'll start off with like the easier questions and get into the more intense one later in the video. You know, I just need time to warm up. So first question is, do you miss Canada? So if you don't know, I am a Canadian girl living in LA right now. I moved here about a little over a year ago, I would say. And I do miss Canada, but I go back very often. I have friends there, I have family, and Canada just feels like home. It's so familiar. I have so many memories there, you know, from growing up and everything. So I do really like to go back, especially when I get overwhelmed with the LA lifestyle and I just need a break. I'll go back home, visit my family, have a little refresher. But you know, I also feel like when I'm there for too long, I start to miss LA. And so I don't know, I'm in between. I love living in LA, but I also love Canada. So I'll forever be a Canadian girl at heart. Next question asks if I wanna get another dog. And the answer is always yes. I wish I could have a thousand dogs, an army of them. I have two dogs right now. Prince stays with me in LA. He's a teacup. Morky and then I have another Maltese and he's adorable. His name is Wolfie Jr. And he lives in Canada because he's not great at traveling and I didn't want to like uproot him because he just doesn't deal well with changes and he has like crazy anxiety and stuff. So he's just way more high maintenance than Prince. Like with Prince, I can travel with him. Just from knowing like that I can't really give Wolfie Jr. the life that I want to give him in LA with me. I think that's enough to stop me from getting another dog, but maybe in the future because I freaking love dogs so much. They're so sweet and so loving and just perfect little creatures. So if I were to get another dog, it'd probably be a little teacup Pomeranian, little white fluff ball, <laughs> I wish. I have to show you. Too Faced sent me this picture of me and my babies, you guys. Look how cute. Literally, I've never looked better, so love that. And then my puppies look so good. I feel like they captured them so well. So I love this so much. This is me and my babies. And thank you Too Faced for this. Next question says, how do you have time to manage visits with your mom, edit and relax? And I want to answer this one because it kind of has to do with, you know, me visiting Canada my family and all that. Honestly, I still struggle with like keeping my life balanced with work and family and friends and like other hobbies and stuff that make me really happy because as much as I love my work, it kind of is a double-edged sword or whatever the heck that saying is because I can just work, work, work. And then before you know it, it's been like two weeks of me filming and editing and filming and editing and like not leaving my house. And that's when I start to, you know, start feeling down and like I need some more family time or going out or whatever it is. And so I tried to balance it and whenever I start feeling overwhelmed with work or like I need a break I'll just go home to Canada visit my family and they really just keep me grounded and make me feel supported and loved and I find that lists are really really helpful for me so I'll like schedule out my days or my week and I'll even schedule in things like face masks or some time to watch Netflix or whatever because if I don't then the whole day will go by and I'll realize I didn't really do anything for me that day and so making lists and actually scheduling my work stuff with also more personal self-care stuff really helps me to stay on track and make sure that I am making time for myself and my family and everything that I want to make time for. Next, someone wants to know how I'm even real. Well, let me tell you, it has to do with my mom and my dad and they did something 24 years ago that created this beautiful creature that is I. That's how I came to existence, so. Next, I'm gonna bang out these questions real quick if they're all as fun as these. So I've applied cream contour and next question I'm gonna answer is, have you ever struggled with anxiety or depression? I definitely deal with both those things and I've never really tried to hide it. I'm pretty sure I have talked to you guys 
guys about dealing with my anxiety and stuff before. This past year obviously was really hard for me personally and I had a lot of changes in my life and I feel like the anxiety and like depressed feelings really just escalated more so than they ever have in my life. And then also I feel like as I'm getting bigger or more so in the public eye, I start to get more and more anxious and get those feelings more often than I used to because I'm being put more out of my comfort zone than normal. Or if I'm getting new opportunities that I haven't done before, like when I went to Milan Fashion Week, that was like such a crazy fun opportunity, but I was like crippled with anxiety the whole time. But I just try to not let that hold me back. And some days, you know, when it is really bad and I feel like not getting out from under my covers, like I will give in sometimes. Like sometimes you just need that and just tell yourself that you'll get it the next time. But most of the time I will try and just push through those anxious feelings and use like some sort of coping mechanisms and like tell myself that, you know, everything's gonna be okay. This feeling will pass because I don't wanna miss out on whatever that opportunity is that's making me feel anxious. Because a lot of the times I get that feeling when I'm being put out of my comfort zone or I'm trying new things and that's when the most personal growth happens. All the times that I have missed out on opportunities because of my anxiety, I'll regret it afterwards and wish that I had done it anyway, even though I was feeling the way that I was. When I feel like a heavy anxiety or something coming on or I feel like I might have a panic attack, I just focus on like one thing in the room, take like five extremely deep breaths and that sort of brings my nerves down a little bit, stops me my hands from shaking and stuff and I just tell myself that you got this and just get through it anyway. That's my only tip. If you guys have any other tips with dealing with those type of feelings, leave them down below. Let's help each other out. Netflix shows, oh my God, my fave thing to talk about. I love Netflix, I watched like everything on there. But right now the ones I'm watching that I'm really into is Queen of the South, it just came out with a new season, so freaking good. If you like shows about like cartels and drugs and all that, that's what that one's about, but it's with a female lead and she is a boss ass bitch, okay? She like comes up from nothing and then ends up like owning, you know, the whole thing and becomes like a cartel leader. It's like very good, okay, watch it. And then also Lucifer, I love Lucifer. I think it's so well done and it's just hella entertaining. But my favorite like sitcom show of all time is probably New Girl. So funny. It's like the modern version of Friends, I feel like. What are your favorite Netflix shows though? I just finished watching like all of those. So I need some new suggestions, leave them down below. Favorite foundation currently, I actually used it today. Right now it is the YSL All Hours Foundation. I'm just really liking it, how it's sitting on my skin. My skin has been like so dehydrated in some areas. So this will go over top of those dry patches nice and easy and still keep my skin looking glowy and pretty. But honestly, I'm not loyal. I try new foundations like every day, but right now it's that one. Set in my concealer now. Dream collab, dream collab. You guys, I mean, I'm gonna shoot for the stars here and obviously say Kylie Jenner or really like any of the Kardashians. Love them. They're all just such boss babes and I admire so much just like them as business women and also staying true to just who they are. Or, you know, Rihanna, obviously Stan for really shooting for the stars, Beyonce, where you at? Call me, let's get you on my channel. Next question, has your address ever been leaked or fans show up to your house? That's a very interesting question. I feel like this happens to a lot, a lot of YouTubers or just like if you're in the public eye at all. So yes, it definitely has happened to me. I've had like my number leaked. I've had my address leaked. I've had fans like follow me while I'm driving around the city. That's when it can get kind of scary or when people show up to my house. A lot of that was mostly like when I was living back in Ottawa because I wasn't in an apartment. So it was way more accessible like for people just to come right up to my door type of thing. And it's such a tricky situation because as much love as I have for my audience and the people that follow me, you also have love for your privacy. And I just feel like everyone deserves their privacy and it's just common decency, you know, and respect. So bottom line should definitely not be showing up at people's houses no matter how much you love them. And now that I've been doing it for a long time, I know what not to put out there and to be more careful with potentially like accidentally leaking private information. And when I was first starting out, you know, I didn't really think about it. I also feel like my followers and stuff are just very respectful and it doesn't happen to me as much anymore. So love you guys. Definitely not, don't at me. Moving on to blush and the next question. So a lot of you have been wanting an update on my dating life. And I mean, I got so many questions on this. And I mean, I've been open with you guys. You know, I've mentioned before that I'm not really dating. And this whole past year, I've really just tried to work on myself and become my own person again and figure out, you know, what truly makes me happy. But obviously I feel like there's been a lot of rumors and you guys have seen, you know, the picture Charlie posted of us hanging out at Coachella and we've seen each other at many 
many different events and kind of started talking and hanging out again. And you know, right now we're just kind of working on things privately and I just want to keep things simple and kind of just see where it goes without adding any pressure. Obviously, if anything changes or anything becomes more serious, I will update you guys as always. But for now, she's keeping it private and she's working on herself. So now for highlight, I'm gonna be using this Inglot and Jennifer Lopez highlight. It's so pretty. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give yourself? You guys are asking such good questions. Like, dang, I have to really think about this. I think I would just tell myself not to add so much pressure on myself and to just have faith that life has a way of just working itself out. And I just am the type of person that I get stressed out over every little thing. And I feel like that can sometimes really just hold me back in life. So I would tell myself to just not overthink it, you know, take things day by day. So the things that seem impossible, you know, one day, the next week could totally just not even be a problem in your life anymore. So old Sylvia, you know, chill, take life day by day and have faith. I still tell myself that, honestly. <laughs> She's still stressed about everything, to be honest. I'd also tell myself, you know, not to worry so much about what people think. I feel like being a Libra, I always am thinking about how my decisions might affect other people or make other people feel. And then that can influence my decisions. And sometimes that makes me choose things that I might not actually in my heart really want out of fear or whatever of just like hurting other people or what other people might think of me. You know, cause at the end of the day, it's your life. So if you're making decisions based off of what other people want you to do, you're not gonna truly be happy. And so that's something I would tell my old self and my new self. Okay, let's lighten it up a bit. These questions are intense, you guys. Jeez Louise. So next question, most embarrassing moment in public. Which one do you wanna hear? There's so many. I feel like me just being such a goofy, kind of awkward individual. I have so many embarrassing moments cause that's just my life. Let's move on to eyes. I'm gonna use this white eye pencil first all over my lid. So then the purple color I'm gonna go in with will be brighter. I think the first one that comes to mind, I was at a wedding, I was probably like 12 years old. First of all, I wore white to the wedding. No one freaking told me you're not supposed to wear white to weddings. And you'd think by 12 years old, I would know this, but I didn't. So that's cringe in itself. So at this wedding, I went to the bathroom, came out of the bathroom and had the longest piece of toilet paper stuck to my shoe. So cliche, but it literally happened. And I walked from the bathroom, threw everybody eating at their tables, across the dance floor until somebody ran after me and told me that I had the longest piece of toilet paper stuck to my shoe. And that was embarrassing for me because everyone saw the person running after me to tell me. Safe to say, I will not leave a public bathroom now without looking down at my feet. Now let's do a little lavender moment with my eyes. I'm gonna use this shadow from the Purple Times Nine MAC shadow palette. And we'll pack that on top of the white. Next question, what has helped you preserve your confidence and self-security in your journey to success? Whoa, good question. Confidence is something that I just have to work on like every single day. You know, I'm only human, especially being in this business where so much is focused on how you look and the whole LA scene, you know, it can be a lot. And especially with hate comments and things like that, as many positive comments as you get, sometimes one hate comment can like drown out all the good and you just have it stuck in your head. And without even realize, sometimes subconsciously, you can start thinking that way about yourself. Just remember that nobody's life is perfect, no matter what they show on social media and mine included. Some days, you know, I can feel like top shit and like the, I'm the greatest of all time. And then the next day I can feel like the ugliest little toad in the world. It's just something that I have to constantly work on with myself and give myself little pep talks. So you gotta be your own cheerleader and focus on the things that you do like about yourself, like on those days that you really are feeling down. You just pick like one or two things that you do like about yourself, put a smile on, even if it's a fake one, and then you start to believe it and you start to feel a little bit better. But it's okay to have insecurities, everybody does. It's just all about talking yourself up and not letting those insecurities get the best of you. Now I'm gonna do a wing liner off camera though, because your girl cannot talk and do her wing at the same time. So wing is done and I also did a little inner corner matte white highlight and I'm feeling it. We got the purple vibes going. Mm -hmm. Next mascara, I'm using the Tarte Maneater mascara. And next question is, question's a good one. Is it hard making friends now that you're an influencer? I feel like I've never really had a hard time making friends. I'm a very social person, but there's definitely like a different awareness now that I have to have in letting people in and in my social circle. I'm definitely the type of person that would rather have a few really good friends that are solid relationships that I wholeheartedly trust and let them into my life rather than have a bunch of friends just for the sake of having a lot of people in my life. Like at my core, I feel like I'm a very trusting person and I sometimes assume that other people think the way I think and treat people the way I would treat people, but that's not the case. And I learned that very quickly, especially moving to LA. There's people out there that will literally target you just for having a big following and like weasel their way into your life and not have the best intentions, you know? And I learned that very quickly with getting burned a couple times when I came out here and just realizing who my real friends are. 
and it's just a sad reality like it sucks but at the end of the day you have to realize that everyone is not going to treat people how you would and you have to protect yourself and your heart and your feelings but that doesn't stop me from making friends it's just made me more aware and more cautious and a little bit more careful with who I let into my life and then the relationships that I really put time and effort into are obviously the ones that I feel like are there for me and like me for me and not for my following I'm gonna apply these K-Minx lashes in the style H27 off camera and then we'll move on lashes did the dang thing moving on to lips using the Kylie Coco K liner with Jouer's opal lip gloss what is your nationality I see this one a lot so I am Canadian I was born in Canada but my ethnicity you know my background where my parents are from is Albanian so my parents are Albanian but they grew up in Macedonia and there you go there it is now you know she's Albanian shout out all my Albanians out there except I'm pretty like whitewashed you know I understand the language but I don't fluently speak it I can kind of say a few words but my family makes fun of me because I have an accent and I sound ridiculous and last up we got the lip gloss from Jouer and the last question that I'm gonna answer is are you planning to expand your makeup products and collabs right now we are about to launch some new merch so get excited for that follow at Sylvia Gani shop on Instagram to be the first to know when it drops you guys are gonna love it literally so excited to drop these items they are so cute of course would I drop anything ugly no you know this and I'm definitely open to doing more makeup product collabs if the opportunity should present itself I'm so lucky to have had such a successful year you know career wise I came out with the BH palette love that baby get yours now $24 don't miss out and then recently being a part of the MAC campaign with the little tamed powder kiss lipstick your girl's on fire those were both like dreams of mine that I had just never thought would happen and they did so I can't even imagine like what the future has in store I'm working on some things behind the scenes I'm excited for you guys to just you know ride with me along this journey so keep coming back keep watching my videos and let's see where this thing goes together we can do it all you and I but you know on another note I'm not really feeling this lip gloss what's happening here it's not cute we're switching it so I've just thrown on ABH's butterscotch lip gloss on top and that completes the look so those are all of the questions that I'm gonna answer I feel like we did a lot of them I hope you guys enjoyed this honestly I love doing these kind of videos every once in a while and opening up to you guys you know my S Club is just so supportive and like understanding in like anything that I do that even when I'm being vulnerable like this like I know that you guys just have my back no matter what thank you for listening and thank you for being here and being my ride or dies and for watching my videos I love you guys and I appreciate you and if you want to see these kind of videos more on my channel then let me know and I can do them for you I really like how the makeup look turned out I mean it was really simple look but we killed it looks good match the backdrop and you'll probably see this in another video because I'm gonna film another video after this and I'm not changing my makeup you know too much effort but that's all for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did click the subscribe button right here and then check out these other videos of mine if you haven't seen them yet and I will see you guys in my next one bye guys bye